Hello, everybody, and welcome to Kairos Has Friends, where I sit down with the people that I admire the most, and those people are my friends. Before we get to our interview today, please be sure to follow me on Facebook and on Instagram at The Vibe of Kai. You can also follow me on Snapchat and on TikTok at Kairos Keenan, where I'm always doing something a little crazy. And then uh, some of you may know this already, but we have Vibe with Kai merchandise now, which is Crazy to even think about, but if you go to my website, thevibewithkai.com, you can get your t-shirts, your hats, whatever you want. I, I have a, uh, some of my merchandise in my room. I'm not going to go get it because I'm lazy right now, mm -hmm. but um, go get that. If you act today, you can get 15% off. But enough about me and my nonsense. Uh, I am sitting here with, uh, with somebody that I, I very much respect in, in, in the world of art, uh, somebody that it's it's a shame that we haven't worked together more often. X. Oh my god. <laughs> but we but, but it's he's somebody that I respect. He is a producer, actor, musician, just all of the anything that you could possibly think of. This man does it. This is AJ Dwayne, aka AJ Mamba. AJ, what's good, homie? How are you? Ah man, it's been a minute, Kai. It's been a minute. <laughs> You got merch now. That's amazing. That's I awesome. got merch now. I'm trying, to step, guys, I'm trying to step it up. Dude, I'm trying to step it up. Isn't like merch, it, like, okay, so I got I got my own company now, and, yeah. like, we started out with merch, too. Isn't it weird yeah. having, like, your own merch? It's weird. Not only <laughs> that, but it's weird when people send me pictures of them wearing it. Like, because that, that's when it gets real. Because I've got, yeah. like, some people that have purchased stuff already, that, like, they'll send me a picture, and they'll be like, hey, Kai, look what I got in the mail today. I'm like, this, this is real. This, this is like, actually actually happening. You're like, wait, wait, what? Like, <laughs> dude, how are, how are you? How are you doing in in the world of quarantine? What is what is what is going on? How are you staying busy? How are you oh, keeping my things God. moving? Quarantine saved my life. Okay, yeah. I'm just gonna say that straight up. Yeah, like, I hear you. Because you know, it, it it's a very frightening thing what's going on, and we need to remember that. Uh, so you know. Like, I was outside earlier, as I was telling you before we started, and it was just like, man, just keeping a distance because you never know. And, like, yeah, people, scary. people may have it and not know, so you're just freaking out. But at the same time, man, I feel like quarantine happened at the perfect time for me. Yes. You know, I've been running hard for, like, three to four years, just mm -hmm. not really kind of sitting down. Right, and, that, and that's one thing I've always noticed about you is that you you're always you're always hustling, man. You're always doing something to like propel your life and your career forward. Yeah, was that always something that you aspire to do, or was that something that just recently came up in the last couple of years, like that drive to just take things up to the next level? Well, I appreciate you saying that, but you know, in all honesty, the past couple of years I felt like I I like slowed down, and okay. you know, it, it was. I'll be I'll be honest with you here, man. Like there was a lot of like. Um, a lot of, lot of mental health issues going on sure. there, a lot of depression and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, before then, I was always hustling, always trying to right. do something because right. I, I always had this need to just create and yep. to perform and like no matter what it was. So um, I, I don't know. I've always, I felt like I've always been like that. Right. The last couple of years, not so much, but now I feel like I'm starting to get like that again. Right. And, I'm and you feel good. You're, you're, feel, you're feeling good right now. Oh, I feel fantastic, baby. Nice. Oh, we like I, I I have not I have not felt this good about myself and what I'm doing yes. since before I went to college. It's crazy. Really? It's crazy. I feel I feel like That's I'm maintaining awesome, it. That's awesome, man. Good for yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel That's great. That's awesome. Congra like congrats to that because I know given all of the the nonsense in the world right now, and we'll get into that in a minute, but like oh, yeah. given all of the stuff that's going on in the world, there's it's so important to, for us to find that that levity and that that sense of um, belonging, <laughs> you know, right. in this crazy, crazy world. So the fact that you uh, feel the way that you feel right now is like that's a good thing, man. So yeah. like, congrats to you and keep fighting, dude, for real. Yeah, man, it's like a sense of purpose, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. awesome, man. So, yeah. so you, so you, you're you're getting into the the, the music game. Well, you've been in the music game for for a minute now. Um, yeah. But like you, but you're do, you're doing your thing. Like, wh where did where did this come from? Like, because you, you used to be very heavy in the in the theater world, mm -hmm. and you started to kind of make this shift in, into the, the world of, of strictly like music and all of yeah. that. Um, what made you decide to go from one to the other, and, and how has it been so far? Okay, so I'm crazy. Let's just start with that. <laughs> um, 
Me too. Grow, growing up, right? Yeah. But like growing up, I've always had like this weird thought of like, yo, what if I was like an actor, but like a rapper and like a producer and like a wrestler and like a comedian? What if I just did everything, right? Yeah. Just ridiculous, like nonsensical stuff. And, it, and that thought never went away, you know? Um, I, I just remember before I even got into theater, I got into theater in ninth grade. Uh, yeah. But in middle school, I started writing lyrics. Uh, yeah. I was watching an anime called Samurai Champloo, and mm -hmm. the beats from that from that like rivaled like Jake Dylan beats, you know. So like I've I've always been writing, and it's only till recently I just developed enough confidence to just say, you know, screw it, I'm just gonna go out and just do right. my thing, you know. Right, right. And it's been getting like a lot of positive feedback, man. So it's just like, man, I can rap. It's cool. But then I could do all these other things too. So right, that's awesome, man. That's so like so in regards to to the music industry. Like, what's what's next for you? Like, what is your what is your goal? What are you what are you looking to try to do? So um, right now, uh, I have this mindset of I'm just going to do the stuff that I want to do that I would yeah. be happy with. You know, I don't want to put any pressure on myself. You know, mm -hmm. because. I, I've been in situations, especially in theater, where I would put pressure on myself and I would, I would fail, you know, right. because I, you know, I just would, I just would put too much on myself unnecessarily, you know, right. to the point where I was just really tough to be around. Mm -hmm. um, but with this man, I'm just enjoying creating content and just putting it out there. You know, the right. satisfaction of putting your music out there is what's right. what's driving me. I've had a lot of success. People are listening to it. Uh, I'm very close to 200,000 uh, streams just nice. on Spotify. So yes. it's crazy, you know, nice. uh, just for yeah. the EP. And then June 22nd, cheap plug, I'm sorry. But no, dude, I got, that's what this is all about, my friend. <laughs> so it's all but, about. Yeah, but June 22nd, uh, I'm releasing a single called Doug Funny. And um, yeah, so like. That's awesome, man. Yeah, so like this point right now, I think I'm just releasing singles once a yeah. month for the rest of the year. It only takes uh, one, dude. It only takes one. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, man, like you could just be like, bow. Right. You, you know, know, it's crazy. But even if it doesn't happen, man, just yeah. I, the satisfaction of just doing it, you know, like that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's the real joy of the whole thing right, that I'm right, right. that I'm experiencing. So right. So no, so you so you mentioned you mentioned theater, right? Which is how mm -hmm. which is how we met. That's how you know we right. became uh, acquainted with each other. Right. Obviously, right now in in the world of theater, uh, it's kind of like a big wake up call mm -hmm. at the moment. And I know that you had recently put up some some of your thoughts about you know, the Black Lives Matter movement and, and how it relates to your experiences in theater. Can you, yeah. can you talk a little bit about what your mindset is on this situation and just theater in general and like just what you've experienced? Well, um, personally for me with theater, I've, I'm not gonna lie to you, I've, I've lost a lot of confidence with uh, theater in, in particular, uh, just doubting myself. And uh, I've had a lot of situations that have happened to me where uh, hate to say it, but it was just race related, mm -hmm. just kind of like an assumption about me mm -hmm. that was just painted just based on my, the color of my skin. It happens right. all the time, but sometimes right. it just, it gets to the point where you just don't want to be around it anymore, you know? Right. And, right. Um, it's hard. It's yeah. hard. And, and it's so unfair. People are surprised by it right now because like a lot of us are coming out and starting yeah. to speak out about it, uh, right. including myself. And, but like what people don't realize is that a lot of us have had these feelings for a long time, but we just never spoke up. We just never said anything, yeah. which is why it's always surprising to me when people say, you know, like, Kai, I want to be an ally for you, but it's exhausting because I don't know what to say or how to say it. I'm afraid I'm going to offend people. I'm like, but that's what a lot of us have been dealing with for years. In decades. That hesitancy even. to say something. Yeah. You know? Like, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. I don't yeah. even know if I ever shared this with you, um, but... Uh, I did, um, I did hairspray once at mm. at a theater that we both frequent with, right? Mm. And um, about like a year later, I didn't know who you were, but I had heard of you <laughs> even back when I was in college, because okay. you know back in the days, ladies and gentlemen, AJ Mamba was attractive. People thought <laughs> I looked like Kyrie, all right. <laughs> you know, people thought I looked like you, man, and. <laughs> I just remember being at a show 
yeah. where I wasn't in it. I was just in the crowd supporting people. And someone came up to me and was like, oh, my God, you played seaweed. Oh, my God, you're so amazing. I love you. And I was like, oh, my God, thank you. Jesus. It's like amazing. <laughs> people don't come up to me like this. And then she, she was just like, uh, <laughs> and she asked for, then she asked for my for my autograph i'm like yeah <laughs> please <laughs> i'm all feeling myself i break this big ass signature <laughs> and she she just reads it and i walk up she goes who the hell is aj i thought that was oh, i was like oh no and i just ran and i was like hey <laughs> oh, no. but but the thing is right little instances like that where people would like come up to me um, and would just think that I'm you, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. it's just like, no, <laughs> we look nothing alike. Right. So and, it's and like, which is, that's the crazy thing because like there's other black artists that I get mistaken with all the time right. that we don't look anything alike. Yeah. And it's not even like, it's like not even close, you know, like, like, and I'll, and like, that's, that can be a big turnoff sometimes. You know, just to, yeah. to, to theater and, and just the, the, the small mindedness that it can be sometimes. Um, is that is that one of the like, was there any one instance or one experience that you had that you were just like, no, I can't, I can't do this anymore? <sighs> um, there was plenty of instances where I said that, but mm -hmm. my drive to, but I kept coming back because it was just like, this is your chance to be creative. Right. This is your chance to you know a lot of people don't realize this theater was the only way i ever like communicated with people for a good couple of years because mm -hmm. i was so afraid to talk to people outside of it because uh, i would just be in my head all the time like you know do people think that i'm like this weird monster that they that their eyes make me out to be right. you know um I, it's funny i was talking to my business partner earlier today and we were just sharing like war stories basically mm -hmm. and i told him about this story that I forgot about. Um, I did Ragtime mm -hmm. uh, back in 2007. It was mm -hmm. like one of the first like big theater shows I did outside of high right. school. And I was ensemble and we, we had a real interesting experience. It made me question whether or not I wanted to do theater to be sure. Uh, right. Because you know how Ragtime is. Ragtime is a period piece about race yeah. so anyone that is directing that piece needs to have respect and understanding for every race because it's Absolutely. not just white people it's mm -hmm. immigrants right. jewish people jewish mm -hmm. community black people the black community and stuff like that this show was so was was just such an eye-opener man because like yeah. i looked at theater as like an escape from this stuff but right right. Really right in it right. um so i was a part of the black ensemble Mm -hmm. the fact that you have to call it the black ensemble it's just like man like you know we don't it's like oh my god we don't realize that we're black we, we gotta have a label for that surprise oh man i i was not aware holy crap whoa you know so you have to remind us of that crap man and then so it, it just bled into the entire process and it yeah. just got a lot of attention because the black ensemble had black rehearsals Mm -hmm. uh, segregated from the white ensemble having white rehearsals, segregated from the immigrants having immigrant uh, rehearsals. And one day we were filming this scene where, you know, the scene where little brother walks up to the, to, uh, the black ensemble and like guy goes, Hey man, you got a nickel, you know, oh, right, right. that scene. Right. So, uh, Ah, oh, man, like, it, it, it was just crazy, because that day, first off, we got our clothing. Now, if you do your, if you do your history, and you look at that time for ragtime, yes. black people cared about how they dressed. Yeah, very much you know, so. They, they put in effort. So the, the costume crew made us look like a bunch of dirty, good-for-nothing, oh, no. like, like, just homeless That means they didn't do the assholes. research. No, they didn't. Mean, they didn't no, do the research. They, they did not. They did not. So we got yeah. upset about that, as you would, because you're portraying your race in a period piece. Mm -hmm. And then not only that, but to top that off, you know, at, I mean, the area that we're at, a lot of directors, 
I have trouble respecting them because a lot of directors love the spectacle of musical theater, but they don't love the substance. Right. Basically, like, oh my God, the singing's brilliant. The technical design is amazing. The the dancing is unique. Uh, go in the corner and act. Right. And, you know, I, I right. just, I, that, that irks me so much. So right. we got a note saying uh, there needs to be some action on the stage. So, uh, right. you know, you guys go in and, and do and do black things, right? Oh, my gosh. In 2007. And they were looking at us because we got we got really pissed off. The, the entire yeah. black ensemble, like, almost walked out of the show completely. Um, I know I didn't go to rehearsal for a week. Yeah. And, like, you know, like it was, like, one of my first shows. But I was just really, like, hurt by that, you know? Right. I, I remember seeing uh, when that happened because it spilled into this big argument because the costume thing happened the same day. Right. Built into this big ass argument about like you know when you're, I just remember saying like you know respect everyone, you know mm -hmm. like just because you come from a particular experience mm -hmm. is your duty in theater, and I believe this to my core to this day. Anyone that does a theater show, it is your duty, it is your job to do that stuff justice. I'm trying not mm -hmm. to curse. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And you know you can't just you can't just put all your effort in one a avenue and then neglect another thing. That's why we're in this situation to begin with. And like right. I had to, I had to point out to the director, what's the end of Act One? Uh, until I reach that day. Yeah. Yeah. That sparked because Sarah, Cole House's uh, baby mama and love of his life, is sitting there, murdered. like, yeah, hands up, not a threat to nobody, gets mm -hmm. murdered. Broad daylight, in front of a bunch of people, no justice, mm -hmm. and freaking, we're, we're sitting there saying until we reach that day, and guess what Act Two is? Basically riots, basically Cole House just. It's, it's going crazy quack, quack, how quack. relevant a lot of this stuff is. Like that show takes place in what 1902? It's yes, 2020. Exactly, and it's man. Still just like happening. There's still issues. Probably like. Just as much. <laughs> yeah. And, but the thing is, like, it was it was the first time in my life. Yeah. And like I, I can admit, I, I grew I moved uh, from North Philly to South Jersey when I was eight. Mm -hmm. Lived in the suburbs. Most mm -hmm. of the time I'm like the only black kid in the in the area. Mm -hmm. And everybody kind of embraced me by the time I was twelve. So I I have to be honest with you. Yeah, race racism happened. But it wasn't as often as, like, other people that had to deal sure. with it. So I was very fortunate about that. Mm -hmm. But that was, like, the first time where it was just like, oh, my God. Right. Why people can be racist to you and completely oblivious about it. Right. You right. know? What do you, and, think, what do you think theaters can do to improve the, the, the situation? Because the situation is pretty clear, right? There's a lot of black actors and performers, uh, dancers, singers that are just, like, really voicing their concerns right now. A lot of people that are, are turned off from theater, you know, right, the theater experience yeah. right now, including myself. Um, what do you think theaters can do to help at least turn things around right now? Man, that's such a tough question. I don't it's know. It's hard, yeah. You know, uh, like, because I know for me, like, I got my reasons for being jaded for theater. Mm -hmm. You know, people know about it and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But, you know, I've I've always rooted for people in theater because theater can be such a unique learning tool. You can learn from so many different mistakes mm -hmm. uh, that society has had. Theater is there to not only entertain us, but to educate us. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I fell in love with it so much. But right. oh, man, I, I just, because I, my thing is this, the thing that I fear is going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Is that theaters are going to over, they're gonna like overdo it, you know. Like, right. I'm, I'm, I'm missing the word, but like they're gonna be like way too like, pro black, like, to like, the... like overcompensate in some manner. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it almost like uh, when. Uh, but would that be a bad thing? I don't know because here's the thing, right? How did you feel? Let me ask you this question. Yeah. You saw when Nancy Pelosi and everyone was wearing those, uh, yes, wearing those garbs and they yes. and they kneeled. How mm -hmm. did you feel about that? Because they were trying, but they didn't know. Right. But I it mean, just felt like they were overcompensating, right? I appreciate the gesture. Uh, I thought it was weird. Yes. Um, and here's the thing. That 
like it's it's part of the education now because there's going to be plenty more moments like that where we have our 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 allies that are going to be like doing what they should be doing which is taking the step forward are there going to be some mistakes that happen absolutely but you yeah. know what at least they're willing to learn from it and right. grow from it because like we need to acknowledge the issue at hand and then say okay what are we willing to number one do something about it number two are we willing to um uh take the necessary actions and 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 listen to people right listen to, to black people and uh, uh, you know listen to, to hispanic people listen to asian people you Native know americans listening to all of like all of these people and, and live and learn there's going to be mistakes that are going to be made 100 yeah. percent. that like it's closely democrat thing i appreciate the gesture i know it, it came from the heart yeah Mm, not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, no, and I'm like right there with you because like yeah. I sat there, it's just like I know what you're trying to do, but it was just like, ugh. Yeah, it's like you know? it's like when a politician oh. is uh, speaking Spanish during a debate, just to just to cater, just just to kind of pander to the Spanish base. Like, oh, hey, so como estás, como estás biblioteca? See, I speak Spanish. Vote for me, Spanish people. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know how they were saying yes for Obama. Well, you guys need to say C for me. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Like, like stuff like uh, that. It's stuff just like, that. like, what are you thinking? You're supposed to be like, oh man, why? No, okay. Would you? We, would you ever? Would you ever come back to uh, uh, the theater? Okay, so I was wondering if you were going to ask me this question. Mm -hmm. I did. If you're wondering, I did. I just did. Just now. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, here, here, here's my here, here's my answer, and I yes. need to address a particular situation in regards to that mm -hmm. um, because this would probably be the best platform for me to address it. Sure. I, tr I tried to come back. Uh, I tried to come back last summer. I uh, directed and produced a, a version of a play that I wrote uh, called uh, Heart and Lung, which... Mm -hmm. um, it's it's uh, it's about this female doctor in the '80s, and she she uh, goes through time. It goes back and forth in time, kind of like a Tarantino thing with like mm -hmm. a Greek chorus, uh, just kind of pointing out like just like the fears that women had in regards to uh, just being themselves, and like you know this woman uh, fell in love with another did this woman at, at the fringe at the yeah at the fringe. yeah yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. It. Mm -hmm. yeah you you saw it. So I yeah. I tried to bring it back. It was like my my way of tiptoeing back into. Mm -hmm theater you know c could i do it again i had so much anxiety about it and as a result a lot of mistakes were made on my part so i want to take this time um on this particular show um anyone that i worked with at that time i'm sorry i apologize i was not myself and uh the reason why i wasn't myself was because there was so much anger and frustration built up from years and years of just harboring these emotions that I had from a random Facebook post that basically canceled me, let's be real, uh, in regards to uh, the Me Too movement and theater, you know? Um, when I, I'm just going to go into it because why not, uh, you know, a couple years ago when the Me Too movement started, all of a sudden you see in all these different uh, posts hashtag me too hashtag me too people that you didn't even realize had gone through that uh we're going through that and it took a lot of strength and a lot of courage for a lot of people to just type that um i didn't type that i typed that hey uh you know maybe us as men uh because of just the history of the whole thing maybe we need to back the hell off of women in general and respect them more you know um and then this was the operative term, I said, because the damage had been done. The key word that was taken out of that was damage. And a lot of people didn't like that term that I used. Uh, it, it was probably worded like sloppily because when I write on Facebook, man, like I, I write like an idiot anyway, like, you know, English is my only language and I'm not good at it. So, uh, <laughs> but, you know, it was just like, the, it was definitely a, a learning day where I basically got called so many different things i got called pro rape i got called um just misogynistic a pig a trump supporter uh i i, I got called so many different things man the, the one thing that hurt the most was uh just calling me like an enemy 
of, of women. Now, I kind of see myself as a feminist, but not like radical because I believe in equality on the purest form. I think if you have a male doctor and a female doctor and they're both capable of doing like a, an, a surgery on you that will save your life um, and you end up giving me the female doctor, that female doctor better be paid as much as that male doctor because she's capable of doing the same thing that he can do. So what the hell, you know? Right. Well, things like that. So um, that, that, kind, that basically ended my theater career and I, it just brought a lot of anger and frustration because it was a lot of people that I knew. And it was, we bring it back to the whole race thing and everything like that. And it might, and it might just be me kind of like just splitting hairs and reaching for stuff, you know? But a lot of, a lot of the comments came from, came from white women okay and and then after the white men women were speaking then you got the comments from white men as well okay and they were just it was just like such a constant attack and I'm sitting there constantly trying to defend myself to people that I spoke to in person about these subjects for years and that's the part that really hurt it's like I've been talking to you guys opening up to you guys in person so many times in life that you actually go onto Facebook and you see a comment and you don't have the, the respect, you don't have enough respect for me to kind of message me privately to see uh, how it meant. Like if, if someone would have messaged me privately, right. And they would have been like, Hey, listen, I, I read what you said. I don't know what you meant by this, but this is how it's coming across. I would have reacted favorably to that, but I, I didn't pay attention to Facebook. And then by the afternoon, I got my family calling me saying that they're they're destroying my name on social media. Um, but and, but you so what, with with all of that being said, like the, the things that people were talking to you about, but like about why they felt that way, what, did you find that to be you know a, a learning experience? And do you feel that you've that you understand why people were mad? Is, like, is, is that what is that I, how you feel now? I I, I understand, but the, I got to be honest with you. I struggle with understanding from time to time because I I I understand I understand the anger and the hatred. You know, uh, recently I've been okay with talking about my experience as well. I can say me too as well uh, from an incident that happened in college, and you know, but I but I'm not that strong as a lot of people are to kind of share that story, um, which, you know, I, I commend people to be able to be strong like that. But my thing is this, and this kind of connects to things these days. If you want, if you want people to understand where you're coming from, you got you to gotta be, be able to communicate with that person. You can't just attack. You can't just constantly attack because I, I, I was in that position. I felt threatened. I felt, like people were just trying to destroy my name for the sake of destroying it. I couldn't connect if it was genuine or not at the time, you know, so, whether, whether their comments were, were genuine or not, you're saying, right. Like whether or not their comments were genuinely uh, out of, out of frustration of the situation in general, or whether or not it was just them kind of piling going for the sake of piling going, because you get a lot of people in, in the theater world that will try to like say, say things not because they believe it particularly but because they think all right this will give me a good standing with these people here and there and stuff like that i've seen it all the time so it's just but the, so but the, i'm sure there were people that like i didn't personally see the status so part of my ignorance here but, oh, no no it's cool um, it's cool so but the people that but, did comment on this that you do speak with on on the on the regular maybe probably more often than some other people were you able to essentially connect with them and and just get their mindset you know uh and and see why they felt the way that they felt about what you what you put up especially because you're saying that like they you've had conversations with these people before right. and then you put up the the status and then they you know they kind of you know um it, it's so what they had to say did you get a chance to to talk with them and because like maybe like my guess is that perhaps um they were I mean, they might have been triggered in some way seeing that it is such a traumatic experience that there's right. no like standard operating procedure as to how one should cope with that right, right? because it's like that's like that's traumatic you know yeah. and, and um to this 
to this day, you know, it's a, it's a very sensitive subject for obvious reasons, because like that, that shit is, is scary. Yeah. You know, to, to live through that, let alone to speak up about it. Yeah. Um, were you, were you able to connect with some of the people that did comment on that? Like, did you reach out to them privately and say, Hey, I saw what you wrote here. Um, can you explain to me what you meant? Cause I want, I want to try to understand where you're coming from. Honestly, it took a couple of years for me to, to, to try to reach out. And it, and it was because I was so hurt. You know, I don't want to say I was angry. You know, anger is what it looked like, but it was really pain. It was hurt because I know, I know what I meant by that stuff. I know I, I wasn't trying to attack or anything like that, but it was just like it, that day in particular, I just remember trying to talk to people, but they had already made up their mind about me. So, um, a couple of years later, I spoke to a, a, f a few people, or, or I at least tried to reach out um, and tr try to explain, you know, um, that I apologize for for any type of misunderstanding that that was, you know. Um, for some people, it's a little too little too late, which I understand. It's, it is what it is. But at the same time, it's just like, you know, I... I I was really hurt by that, man. Like, even right now, I'm, like, getting choked up about it, you know, you, you know, because... Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I guess I, I, I guess I get why you were hurt, and I just, like, I, I guess... But my I only, understand. My only challenge to that is, I mean, they, in that moment, they were hurt. Yeah. You no. know, uh, whether whether their statements are true or not, like, in whatever they, they were saying, like I said, I, I didn't see the status, so I'm, I'm just yeah. going completely blind here. Right, right. Um, but I, I think, um, like, it understanding like the un, the frustration and the anger of course i understand that of course i do uh but i also i also knew that there was a lot of anger at that time just in general and and i knew that you know maybe now's not the time for me to talk to anybody on like a on like a legitimate level because there was just so much anger at the time where it just felt like it was a it just I felt like I couldn't come to people privately and talk to them because they had came about it so publicly mm -hmm. uh, about how much disdain they had for me. But right. um, so well, I, could, I, I, I mean, I encourage you, like if, if at some point, because if, if something similar were to, to happen, you know, like I, one thing that I know I've been working on is just the basic just communication, because like, like right. even times right now with the Black Lives Matter movement, like tensions are high. Yeah. Um, but like for me at least, I'm like this is more of a reason for us to have this kind of uh, conversation, no matter how uncomfortable it, it may be. Right. Well, so people are, are speaking out of passion right now. Yeah. Uh, do I agree with everybody? No. Right. Do the, does everybody agree with me? No. <laughs> you know. So, um, I, but at least we're continuing to have that conversation, and um, you know, people, no matter what you do, people will always have, you know, their thoughts about you and not i'm not saying you but i mean just you well, not, like anybody in, as a person in general in general right? yeah and no i got general, you you know and and um i guess what makes a person is what you do with that information right you know you can either use it to become better and to educate yourself or you can just let it sit there and gestate and tear you down yeah and and, what, and and like that and that's the hard part because it's easy it's easy to sit here and just like to be like, <laughs> yeah. right. Um, one thing, uh, if, yeah. if you don't mind, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. But one thing I do want to point out is that it did make me, uh, it, it, it did uh, make me uh, go to therapy, mm -hmm. you know, which I, which I'm a supporter of. I, I'm, I'm very adamant. Like, you know, it's, it, it's, yeah. it's not, it's not a weak thing to go to therapy. No, it really not. isn't. I've been to therapy and it's, it's the best thing. It's the best yeah. decision I've ever made. It's, it's, there's, there's a lot of strength to that. I actually think it helped me out a lot to be where I am today. Sure. Um, so I, I think, you know, like one of the thing one of the things that happened was just trying to reach out to people and just kind of saying like, look, man, I'm sorry. You know, it, you don't have to forgive me if you don't want to, but you know, I understand where that frustration why there was so much frustration at the time, why there was so much anger at the time. Um, and yeah, you know, um, I still, the weird thing about it is, man, I still want to be able to have conversations with the, with and those you should. people. 
You should. You know? and, I mean, you should, I mean so, like it might take time, you know, but you know, I, I always say to people like time um, is sometimes time is needed, but yeah. I mean, it's, it's still, I don't ever want to give up on, on something or somebody, right. you know, I won't ever like push, you know, um, but I'll always put out feelers and be like, Hey, listen, if you want to talk, I'm here. Uh, yeah. I wanna you've done, you've done that for me from time to time. And I yeah. appreciate that. Mm -hmm. What's up? You've done that for me from time to time. Yeah, because I, I respect you, man. You're, you're some yeah. you're somebody that that I respect. I you know we we don't we didn't get a chance to work together often. <laughs> we've only but done one show together. One you realize show, that? Sister Act. Yeah, we've yeah. Done one show together. That's it. That and the crazy thing about that man is like I was so scared doing that show because of like like that was after the whole Me Too thing, and that was me trying to like get back into it. But there was just so much. Ah oh, man, there's so much, um, so much weight. Sure. You know. Sure. Well, I, so I hope weight. that I hope if anything, um, that you you've learned, you know, and can and continue to to grow from it, yeah. and because it won't be the last time that you know tensions will be high on something that yeah. that sensitive and that touchy. And like, and let's be real, the Me Too movement, it's still here very much yeah. so because you know that that's something that's very that needs to be talked about. You know, exactly. just as much as, as Black Lives Matter and just as much as, as, you know, some of the other topics that are going on right now, because, you know, that that action to, to, to be taken advantage of is it's a, horrific. It's a it's feeling. Horrific. It's a feeling yeah. that just makes you feel hopeless. Yes. It makes you feel mm -hmm. like hell. Like I, I felt completely emasculated. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah um it it's it's just it's really tough and i would never want anybody to go through that right never you know and and i, I mean i applaud the people that that you know continue to tell their stories and they should yeah you know, they should tell their stories and and um you know because i think that i mean this is another topic for another day but i mean there yeah. are, are definitely me too stories within the theater world let's be real of, of course so, man <laughs> this uh yeah. like uh, it, i yeah. man that's Oh, we yeah. like it's just that's so a, that's another story. That's for another such day. a whole thing. I will <laughs> I say know. this yeah. I will say this that experience helped me out a ton with what's going on today. And sure. you know, I've learned a lot, I've learned to you know, not just give like a blanket statement on social media. If you got something you want to say, you, you say it and you say it with and conviction. It. Yeah. it doesn't matter how long it is, the people that care will read it, yes. you know. Amen. So that's that's how I feel about it now, and you know, I, there's no misunderstandings about how I feel mm -hmm. now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's awesome, man. I I really do appreciate you uh, talking with me and, and being you know so upfront and, and honest and, uh, and and all of that. Like I said, man, I, I respect you. I always have. I always will. Yeah. Uh, and I, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to to, to sit with me about you know, all, all of these really important subject matters and, right. and all of that. And you, like, so you, you have, you have a, a new single that's coming out on June 22nd. We're going to drop yes. that again. What's it called? called? Doug Funny, right? It's called Doug Funny. Yes. Yeah. And is, is that's going to be on Spotify and all that? It's going to be on all streaming platforms. Spotify, yeah. definitely. Uh, there's a going to, I, all right. So we got to plug. So yeah, I have merch ahead. too. Hey, my Loudstone Entertainment. It's my company with myself and my yeah. and my business partner Andrew Branford, aka yeah. Abra. Uh, we we started this during the quarantine. Yeah. And right now, our our channel is basically just a bunch of interesting video game yeah. uh, stuff. Like right now, like we made a league on NBA Two K mm -hmm. with all teams from like movies, you know. So like <laughs> semi pro, <laughs> six man. Um, yeah. Japanese anime and all that other yeah. stuff, and, we, and we're actually like following it as like it's a nice. it's like an actual league going on. <laughs> um, so awesome, like I'm dude. actually I'm actually editing uh, some of the stuff uh, for that because I got a video for that coming up Wednesday. But nice, it's, not man. it's not only that we have a whole bunch of different stuff. My my uh, web series pilot dudes is on there. Nice. Um, my music is on there. Music video for Black people. 
Yeah. Uh, the music video for Duck Funny is going to drop that same day. Nice, man. See, um, look at you. You're, do you're doing your thing, man, for real. Yeah. Uh, we <laughs> I'm, even talk I'm proud of you, man. We, have, we even talk about anime. And, like, honestly speaking, yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot. Like, I do want to work with you again. It, it'll happen. Uh, it'll happen, dude. It yeah. will happen. Yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. When, when, whenever the world returns to some sort of normalcy, it, <laughs> exactly, exactly. it'll happen for but, real, man. But one last thing, just like yeah. I had this thought pop into my head from a question you asked earlier. You said, what can theaters do? Mm -hmm. uh, in order to kind of combat this issue, right? Mm -hmm. Communication is the key to any type of success. Mm -hmm. So if you're a theater company or you're a, a theater person, you're a theater major, you're a theater whatever, mm -hmm. and you want to understand something that would be better, it all starts with communication. Get mm -hmm. together with your theater group. Get together mm -hmm. with people that you like to create with, whether they have differences from you or not, and just have a conversation there's a difference between hearing and listening when yes. you hear someone you hear noise coming from them and it usually comes across like you're just waiting for them to finish so that you can get your right. point across yeah but if you listen then you actually you actually listen to what they're saying and you have it affect you yeah and then you can actually understand where that other person's coming from absolutely mm -hmm. yeah believe it or not it Dude, helped me out with the action Dropping knowledge. Dropping learned, knowledge today. I'm all about it. I learned that from Suzanne Baldino Jones. May she rest, rest in peace. power. Rest yeah. in power. Yes, man. yes absolutely. And absolutely. I, you know, she, she mm -hmm. taught me that not only for acting, but for life. You know, sure. I miss her to this day. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, dude, I I I, I appreciate you, you coming on, dude. Go go check out AJ Dwayne, aka AJ, AJ Mamba. Mamba. Yeah, yes. man, yo, uh, thank you so much for joining me, everybody. If you enjoyed what you watched today, once again, please be sure to follow me on Facebook and on Instagram at the Vibe with Kai. You can also follow me on Snapchat and on TikTok at Kyrus Keenan. Visit my website, thevibewithkai.com. Dot com. We're doing it up. This is black excellence right here, my friend. Black excellence. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> Both of us doing our thing, man. Yo, AJ, I'm proud of you, man, and, I, and I'll talk to you again soon. Hey, man, thank you so much for having me, Good man. Vibes. Absolutely. Thanks, Good dude. vibes. <laughs>